Hello and welcome to Business 360. I'm Shireen Bhan. The headlines that we're tracking for you this evening. Stocks gain for the fifth straight week as the Sensex ends largely in the red. This is the longest weekly winning streak in seven months. Market regulator SEBI steps up vigilance. Money control reports at phones and laptops of key mutual fund executives were examined in surprise inspections. Over the past 12 months, five out of the top 10 mutual funds have come under the regulator scanner. The chief economist at the IMF says the global economy is holding steady and inflation in the U.S. is showing signs of cooling, adding that higher interest rates in the U.S. will put pressure on other global currencies. You campaigned for it, you fought for it, you voted for it, and now it has arrived. Change begins now. The Labour Party registers a landslide victory in the UK general elections, wins the highest majority in close to 200 years. It's the worst poll drubbing for the Conservative Party. Former Prime Minister Liz Truss, along with a dozen ministers, lose their seats. Keir Starmer will succeed Rishi Sunak as UK's next Prime Minister. Bajaj Auto launches the world's first CNG bike called Freedom 125. The starting price will be 95,000 rupees. Raji Bajaj calls on the government to cut GST on CNG bikes from 28% to 12%. Mahindra Group and Volkswagen are likely to elevate their partnership to a joint venture. Sources say both companies could jointly develop and manufacture electric vehicles. That's an exclusive. GST relief for India Inc. Sources say tax authorities cannot send demand notices on interpretation and classification matters without the finance ministry's approval. Relief for foreign shipping companies, airlines and MNCs as well. Demand notices worth over 1 lakh crore rupees rendered null and void after the recent clarification by the GST council. That's an exclusive. India's defence production hits a record high of 1.27 lakh crore rupees in FI24. Prime Minister Modi and Defence Minister Rajnath Singh say the Make in India push is crossing new milestones. Prime Minister Modi will visit Russia on the 8th and 9th of July. This will be his first visit since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. New dates announced for the NEET PG after it was postponed in June over allegations of irregularities. The exam will now be held on the 11th of August in two shifts. Well, we have a packed Friday show coming up for you. But first, to the market action. The Nifty and the Sensex did see a mixed close this Friday. The Sensex closing in the red. The Nifty ending largely in the green. But despite this, both the indices marking their fifth straight week of gains. The longest winning streak that we've seen in the last seven months. So a flat close there, 440 points lower for the Nifty Bank, 470 points higher for the mid-caps. Prashant standing by with all the market action. Prashant, uh, closing flat for the day but strong for the week. Uh, uh, what is the market expecting as we uh, get ready for Monday? It was a day spent in the red for the most part, but then something changed. And what changed was Reliance Industries. RIL surged starting about 3 p.m. And with it, it took the market up. Out of the negative territory, it was down about 70 points and up about 30, 40 points. So, you know, in the green of flattish zone from being definitively down, that essentially was the story of the day. The big downward pressure, of course, came from just one stock, which is HDFC Bank, which I'll get to in just a bit. But the Nifty up on your screen, the Nifty Bank, uh, which, of course, was uh, still down and out, thanks to, I mean, the singular effect of HDFC Bank pulling... Uh, pulling it down. Everything else in the Nifty Bank actually pulled to the upside. But of course, uh, it's the heavyweight with nearly a 30% weight in the Nifty Bank. That is HDFC. Mid caps and small caps, much better. I mean, about three quarters of a percent gain on both those indices. Uh, the large cap gains coming through, as I said, Reliance Industries, a big one. ONGC did well. State Bank of India is participating. And there were these, some of these uh, FMCG names, Britannia, HUL. And there was a CIPLA for good measure as well, which looked good. HFC Bank intraday tells you the story. It's given up that MSCI positive inflow uh, that day gains and, of course, then some as well. So ending almost about 4% lower by the close of it. I'll get to broader market, more advances than uh, what was down. Lots of PSU names, RVNL, IRFC, IRCON, BEML, Railtel, Texmaco Rail. There was uh, HBL Power, Thermax, Paytm, Shilpa Medicare. Uh, I could go on with these list of names, but... Uh, you get the sense uh, that it was a large PSU day once again. And of course, a smattering of stocks from the Capex PSU power space, which continues to do very, very well and lead the markets higher with stock-specific gains. On the downside, you had names like MedPlus, Policy Bazaar, Inox Green, and Orient Cement, which pulled back 
after seeing gains in the recent past. Back to you. All right, Prashant, many thanks for joining us. That was the market action. And on to global macros. IMF's chief economist, Pierre Oliver, believes that the global economy is doing well and it may hold steady even if the governments change in large countries. Speaking to CNBC TV 18, he said that inflation in the U.S. is now showing signs of easing. However, he did warn that higher interest rates in the U.S. are likely to remain higher, putting pressure on other global currencies. Take a look. There was an expectation that there would be a major slowdown, there could even be a global recession. We haven't seen any of that. Instead, what we have is inflation coming down, growth holding steady, and we are more or less on a path towards a soft landing. Some countries like the U.S. may have a slower disinflation than maybe what they've seen last year, and therefore they might delay a little bit more uh, their uh, uh, easing cycle. And as a result, uh, interest rates in the U.S. might remain higher for longer, and that will put pressure on other currencies. Well, that is the chief economist of the IMF, the top global story. Come tomorrow, Larry, 10 Downing Street's chief uh, mouse will be seeing a new resident, 61-year-old Keir Starmer, soon to be United Kingdom's next prime minister. This after his Labour Party secured a landslide victory in the general elections, winning over 400 seats. The Labour Party's majority, the highest in close to 200 years, has brought an end to 14 years of conservative rule, which saw five prime ministers, including four just in the last five years. The Conservative Party has seen its worst poll drubbing. About a dozen cabinet ministers lost their seat. Liz Truss becoming the first former prime minister in almost 90 years to lose her seat at a general election. The Liberal Democrat, which ate into the Tory vote bank, has seen its best ever performance. Addressing a sea of red during his victory speech, Starmer reiterated his party's election tagline. Change begins now. Starmer has vowed uh, that there will be national renewal and that he would put country first, party second. Top world leaders, including Prime Minister Modi, taking to X to congratulate Starmer on his victory. Outgoing Prime Minister Rishi Sunak conceding defeat, called Starmer to congratulate him on his win. Sunak emphasised that there is a goodwill on all ends and the British people have delivered a sobering verdict. You campaigned for it. You fought for it. You voted for it, and now it has arrived. Change begins now. <laughs> and it feels good, I have to be honest. Four and a half years of work changing the party. This is what it is for. A changed Labour Party, ready to serve our country ready to restore Britain to the service of working people. Today, power will change hands in a peaceful and orderly manner, with goodwill on all sides. That is something that should give us all confidence in our country's stability and future. The British people have delivered a sobering verdict tonight. There is much to learn and reflect on, and I take responsibility for the loss. To the many good, hard-working Conservative candidates who lost tonight despite their tireless efforts, their local records of delivery and their dedication to their communities, I am sorry. We had been expecting defeat for the Conservatives in this election, then expecting crushing defeat, then a Labour landslide. What we are witnessing is really a political bloodbath where the Conservatives stand decimated politically. Labour will form government now with an overwhelming majority with Sir Keir Starmer as the new Prime Minister of Britain. Rishi Sunak has conceded defeat. How could he not? And he's congratulated Labour on their massive win, congratulated Starmer. But Rishi Sunak is now done for. He will have to quit as leader of the Conservative Party. The Tories are very unforgiving of leaders who lead the party to defeat, and then a defeat such as this. Rishi Sunuk's high-flying political career really is over. He will at best now be a backbench opposition MP. A very large number of top conservatives have lost their seats, not forgetting the many who chose not to contest at all, seeing this coming. But over now to Starmer. Starmer has been an effective and innovative administrator with extensive experience in running institutions that Sunak did not quite have. The biggest challenge, of course, will be to steady the economy and to improve the economy, get growth. 
it won't be easy. Growth has been elusive. You'll have to contain inflation, manage the tax burden. The ask is huge, but the British have decided that they will now rely on Starmer and his team for the job. Sanjay Suri reporting there from London. Moments ago, outgoing Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has given his final speech outside of 10 Downing Street. Sunak said he respects his successor, Keir Starmer, calling him a decent, public-spirited man. Take a look. Following this result, I will step down as party leader, not immediately, but once the formal arrangements for selecting my successor are in place. Sir Keir Starmer will shortly become our Prime Minister. In this job, his successes will be all our successors, and I wish him and his family well. Whatever our disagreements in this campaign, he is a decent, public-spirited man who I respect. Well, the UK has voted and the results are in, but France will head into the second round of the SNAP legislative polls on the 7th of July. In the first round of the elections, the National Rally Party secured 39 seats, while the new Popular Front came in second, grabbing 32 seats. However, President Macron's centrist ensemble coalition managed to secure only two seats. Opinion polls suggest that the National Rally may fall short of an absolute majority. And staying with elections, Iran is gearing up for a second round of presidential elections. This after a record low turnout in the first round so far. Sishkian has secured 42% of the votes in the first round, while Jalili has garnered 39%. Back home, Mahindra Group and Volkswagen are holding talks to elevate their partnership to a joint venture. Sources have told CNBC TV18 that both companies could jointly develop and manufacture electric vehicles. Volkswagen was in talks with JSW Group, but sources tell us that those talks have not yielded any results. That's a CNBC TV18 exclusive. Bajaj Auto has unveiled the world's first CNG motorcycle, Freedom 125. The new bike features both a CNG tank and a fuel tank. It has a switch that can be used to toggle between petrol and CNG and a long seat that can accommodate more than two people. The ex-showroom price of the Bajaj Auto Freedom 125 starts at 95,000 rupees. This marks Bajaj Auto's 100th product launch during Raju Bajaj's 34-year-long career. Customer is effectively telling us your job doesn't end with just sales and service of the product. You are responsible for the entire ecosystem for the totality of my ownership experience. We all assure you we are with you through the life cycle of this product, through all the use cases of this product, through all the allied considerations of this product. Sir, shayad isko hamara bajaj ki guarantee aisa keh sakte hain. If you go back and look at your data of 97-98, you will see that that is the year in which Hero Honda actually overtook Bajaj. All the Hero Honda dealers were you know, obviously ecstatic and they were congratulating their chairman, Bridgemon Lalji, uh, on this achievement. Bridgemon Lalji said to all his dealers that, look, now you have to be careful because now the tiger is wounded. You know, This is 1997. So the message of freedom 30 years later is that tiger is in the eye. think I'm sitting on any normal motorcycle, don't you? Well, this is actually the world's first CNG motorcycle by Bajaj Auto. You don't believe me, do you? Wait a sec. Take a look. Here you have a CNG cylinder and that proves my point that this is the world's first CNG motorcycle. Here you actually have a 1.8 kg cylinder fitted inside a motorcycle. This Configuration took a long time. It's taken two and a half years of hard work by the company and its R&D team to put it together. It's an absolutely new ground up motorcycle developed from scratch. And with the CNG cylinder, you also get a fuel tank right here. So you've got a two liter fuel tank and a 1.8 kg CNG cylinder right here. That was a preview 
into Freedom NG04, the latest offering by Bajaj Auto. They hope this will be a big disruptor in the Indian automobile market and abroad. Let's see how the customers receive this vehicle. From Bajaj Auto's uh, R&D and manufacturing facility here in Akudi, Pune, with video journalist Balbir, this is Parikshit Lutra. Well, that's a first look at the new launch there from Bajaj, a world first. Onto a money control exclusive, market regulator SEBI has knocked on the doors of a major market participant, or participants actually. Sources have told money control that SEBI conducted surprise inspections over the past one year and accessed digital devices of executives of five of the top ten mutual fund houses. Money Control's Mahalakshmi joins us now with the details. Uh, Mahalakshmi, many thanks for joining us. Tell us a little bit more about the surprise inspections. So what I'm given to understand is that over the last 12 months, five out of the top 10 mutual funds have been subject to surprise inspections, wherein SEBI has accessed digital devices, meaning mobile phones, iPads, and laptops of top mutual fund executives. Now, these inspections are different from the search and seizure kind of operations, where uh, which are more surveillance driven. These inspections are very different. They are called internally by SEBI, they are called thematic inspections, wherein SEBI inspects records of multiple mutual funds to obtain information on various kinds of things. For example, block trades, concurrent trades, broker communications, etc. The idea is to seize data and analyze patterns to see if there are any aberrations or anything that is odd uh, which needs further scrutiny. This is obviously because SEBI has already automated a lot of uh, its surveillance um, and therefore routine inspections uh, are anyway being carried on. This is just the second level of uh, scrutiny that SEBI is now focusing on and this of course is surprise. So. Uh, that's the that's the different uh, difference in the way these inspections are conducted. All right, Malakshmi, many thanks for joining us. Uh, uh, vigil being stepped up there by the market regulator. Up next, GST relief for India Inc. Sources say tax authorities cannot send demand notices on interpretation and classification matters without the finance ministry's approval. That and more when we return. Telecom major Bharti Airtel has denied a breach of its security systems amidst reports of customers' data being breached. In a statement, Airtel has said that they have conducted a thorough investigation and confirmed that there has been no breach whatsoever. Unverified reports highlighted that details of 375 million Airtel customers were allegedly available on the dark web for $50,000. Cash-strapped airline SpiceJet in trouble again. Irish aircraft lessor JSL has raised concerns on the solvency of SpiceJet after the airline failed to pay its dues. JSL claims unpaid dues of 115 crore rupees, citing that the UK court order has upheld those claims. Meanwhile, SpiceJet assuring the Delhi High Court that the airline is looking to settle the dues. The court has allowed the airline two weeks to respond to the lessor's claims with a settlement proposal. It will hear the matter again on the 19th of July. On to a CNBC TV 18 exclusive GST relief for India Inc. Sources tell us the tax authorities cannot send demand notices on interpretation and classification matters without the finance ministry's approval. Separately, sources also add that demand notices worth over 1 lakh crore rupees will be rendered null and void after the recent clarification of the GST Council. Timzi is standing by with the details. Timzi, big relief for some sectors. What are your sources telling you? Well, that's right, in a major relief for the industry, the Director General of GST Intelligence has now been told that they cannot send any tax demand notices without seeking an approval from Finance Ministry. Remember, this move has been aimed towards reducing litigation and bringing ease of living, and the government has clearly said that these tax demand notices, which are actually based on interpretation or classification matters, they need a CBIC approval exactly from the policy wing of the Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs and only then, once they give a go-ahead, only then is when Director General of GST Intelligence can send these notices to see that whether these interpretation that has been picked up by DGGI is actually correct as per the rules and the law under GST or not. So that's a major relief coming in for the industry and apart from that, if we look at the recent changes that the GST Council in the 53rd meeting has actually given approval to, a lot of clarifications have come 
ground with respect to foreign shipping lines, uh, foreign airlines, and MNCs operating in the country when it comes to their branch office in India and head office abroad. Well, that clarity has come in, and this has now actually settled a lot of DGGI cases sent to these industries. To be precise, now DGGI notices to these sectors will be null and void with these recent notifications. Remember, foreign shipping lines were facing notices of about 1 lakh crore rupees. Foreign airlines were facing about 15,000 crore rupees of DGGI notices, and MNCs were facing about 3,000 crore worth of DGGI notices. And now all these notices have been put to rest on as is where is basis so that's a big move and a big relief to bring in more ease of living reducing litigation that's what the government is now working on back to you all right Tim Z. many thanks in national news assam continues to grapple with floods and heavy rains the death toll in the state has now risen to 52 officials of the assam state disaster management have said that water levels of the brahmaputra dipping largely but the flood situation continues to be grim preeti priyadarshini with this ground report Currently, we are in Huimara in Polashbari, and I am trying to show you the ground situation in Assam due to Assam floods. This is the second wave of flood in Assam, and almost 21 lakh people have been affected. You see the condition of the people, and they are trying to survive like this. They are crossing the roads, they are making their living by shifting to the embankments because of this uh, extremely devastating floods in Assam which has now taken uh, lives of 52 people. I have a few villagers with me here in Bhuimara and this place is devastated completely by the flood water. I would like to talk to you. Uh, well, the situation grim in Assam. The Delhi High Court has sought the CBI stand on the bail plea of Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal while agreeing to hear the plea. However, the court also took notice of the CBI's objection that Kejriwal did not move the trial court first. The court told Kejriwal's legal team not to clog the Superior Court where there is a remedy available at a lower court. The High Court will hear the matter on the 17th of July. Prime Minister Modi will visit Russia on the 8th and 9th of July. This will be his first visit since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The National Test Agency has announced fresh dates for the NEET PG. The exam will now be held on the 11th of August in two shifts. Remember, the exam was first scheduled to be held on the 23rd of June. However, it was postponed as a precautionary measure following allegations of irregularities in the NEET UG. Well, with that, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of Business 360. Don't, don't go anywhere. We've got a CNBC TV 18 exclusive coming up right after this short break. Stay tuned.